First session is called to order. This is a work session to Arba. Well, Dana Prayer, social record, Dick Training. Bradley Gray Jackson. And we may have more people show up, but it's summertime. But thanks for being here. Jonah, Go ahead. Jonah's you know, doing the, the hard work, you know, that okay. I used to do personally, and then uh, help community work service, things like that. Well, it's good to have you guys here. So, uh, you know, there's a fellow that died there not too long ago, and, and uh, right now it's impacted with, uh, I'm just guessing, at about four to six ton of debris, you know, left over. So how do we address the issue? You know, to do something you know, positive about it, similar to what you know, take that part and all that. Except this is a concentrated thing that's been there for 15 years, and we go in there and we clean it all out, and I'll guarantee you it'll be right back in a week or two weeks. I noticed Ed. The courts told us we have to know we have to notify the people. Oh yeah before we clean up their shed or their house. And the problem is then they just move it a few feet away. Then we have to go back, the police officers have to go back and notify that building too. It's a problem and the court's not helping us do this. Right. Welcome to the meeting. Thank you. Thanks, sir. The new administration for Hi, I'm Janet Clapp. I'm the regional director for Brown Chuck. Um, I've been here 35 years, and Liquor Stores of North America hired me as part of the community here in Anchorage. Uh, my name is Roger Leeser. I'm from Kentucky, and I'm the uh, director of the community and government relations for our United States stores. Okay. Hi there, I'm Gerald Proctor. I'm the vice president of government and community relations for Liquor Stores of North America. Well, welcome. Sorry there's not a lot of us here. We've got 11 people on the body. And we had a meeting that went late last night, and we've only got two of us here today, L.B. Greg Jackson and myself, Dick Terrain. We may or may not have more people show up. It's summertime, so if you've got an airplane, you're out flying. If you've got a pole, you're out catching fish. So welcome to Alaska. And if I may, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, ma'am. Well, you know, nobody else is here, and we're... There's nothing we can do about it if they were invited, but at least you have Dick is the chair of the assembly and I'm the vice chair and we're honored to be here. Thank you very much. But Ed, go ahead. We know that's a problem. We've got them all over town, but that one's a particular problem. Right. So the solution, you know, would be what we've tried to do in the past would be to raise a canopy, move, remove all of the underbrush, and uh, when we do that, we're going to a ruckus with the community councils so the idea would be to leave a buffer all the way around it except to where it's exposed to the uh, valley of the moon and the buffer would be maybe 150 feet but that is probably not going to satisfy the community council and, and, and that comes from uh, Mark uh, Butler you know? now here's the federation but have you met with that community council itself yeah we have several times, uh, not recently, but, you know, Mark assures me that they're going to make a fuss. And, and the reason for it is because they need a sound to get rid of. Which community council? That's North Star Community Council. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's what you call the South, East, South Edition Council, right? And that. Northeast Community Council. South Edition. Uh, sorry, it's North Star Community they're Council. Kind of overlapping there. <coughs> so anyway, uh, you know, the history of the place, I, you know, I could There's needles everywhere. Yeah. I mean, they steal the mattresses. You got all the kids and the trails around there. So that's my solution, uh, you know, in the beginning was to uh, raise the canopy and just so you can see through there so the people don't have a place to hide out, which is the same problem we've got in all the growing areas around the city. But I was hoping that maybe we could just focus on this one, this new administration, and see if we could use that as an example. Now, if, if we run into a loggerhead with the community council, then I would just suggest a, a fence. Okay. So, have you met with this administration, Ed? 
on the idea of raising the canopy up? Uh, we just start with you today because okay. this is a new administration, and I know they want to come up with some solutions. And so I'm hoping you can pass this on to the other assembly people because we, we need to rally the troops, you know, to convince them. And uh, other than that, I'd just like to focus on that and then maybe talk about the relationship with the ground shark and Doing and what would happen Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, when's the last time you talked with the North Star Community Council? Haven't. You just, haven't? Just Mark. And Mark's the one who's saying that they're going to have issues. Yeah. Well, um, no offense to Mark, but I wouldn't take his word for it. And the reason why I'm saying this is because people may have felt that way, but our situation has escalated, and I think people may be more, more than willing now to, um, to do what you want to do. And the North Star Community Council is going to meet back in September. Yeah. Right. It's the second Thursday. It's Thursday of the month. Second Thursday of every month. Okay. And I, I, I recommend going to the North Star Community Council and talking directly with them. Sure. I will be there at that Community Council meeting because I attend that one. Okay. So if you're going to be there, yeah. we're happy to make sure you've got the time to talk to them. Because right. the only thing, seems, thing that seems to work is raising the canopy up because people love to hide. If we raise the canopy up, there's less room for them to hide. I've seen this work in other parts of town. The neighborhood may not like it, we don't know, but they don't like the people living in the tents there. Because it's almost a city. Right. Yeah, there's four to six tons of stuff right there. That's going to have to be cleaned up. And then we need to get a hold of uh, Community Work Service and make sure that they're, they're a little more safety conscious know uh, we meant to bring our best but you know when we go in there with the crew everybody's got a vest on and they've got their tools and they've got their gloves on but uh, I noticed that yesterday that when they go in there they got these young fellas uh, and gals you know that are right uh, with their street clothes on just walking in there you know with their trash bags and, and they're supervised but they spread out and when you approach a tent you know and you've got some books in there that are pretty testy and they're you know, kind of halfway there in their head. You know, I'm, I'm worried about them. I, they all need to wear masks. The city's got to do that. I, I, you know, we won't bother you about it. This is one of those things that's going to have to share that with the city. Well, I think the mayor appointed a new homeless coordinator today. And I think that person will get involved with this. Do you know who the district is? Is that the case, Amy, if I may, Mr. Chairman? Nancy Burke. Oh, okay. She's Just got appointed today. Is she familiar with the issues? Oh, yes. Because that name, oh, that's Nancy from uh, Last Night Oh, Trust. Yeah, okay. So she knows the issues. And so I'll just get her contacts. So you've got it on the website now, right? I have a website. And maybe, maybe, maybe you can set up a meeting, you know, with, with us and, and Nancy so that we can talk about this issue. The calls that we're receiving at the office is, is basically like we talked in the Take Back Our Parks meeting. You know, it's complaints and complaints, and we refer it to APD, and then they wait and then they call back and they complain, and they get agitated with us because they're tired of calling so many different numbers. So I, I don't know how that's going to work, but um, somehow we need to follow that a little better. There's too many phone calls coming in, and then we refer them back to APD, and then, you know, APD is supposed to go out and put their notice, a 15-day notice, and then we get notice later, and the posting is done, and people are ready to stretch the whole place, so by the time Jonah is there, it's is double the, the mess that's been there. So somehow we need to, I don't know how, maybe with a coordinator, we can maybe work on that a little bit better so that we know exactly when it's posted so that 15 days right on this mark, we can hit that camp and tear it down and move it along. You know, it's a safety issue for a lot of us. So we do. 
Well, can I comment, please, Go ahead, Mr. Chairman? Thank you. Um, if you remember, Mr. Your Crane budget, and I were um, the two assembly members that brought forward that effort. We were really happy that the mayor didn't veto it, you know, and it was twenty thousand. Um, and I understand exactly where you're coming from because um, we have the same issue to some extent in terms of a municipal contribution with project access. You have all um, the uh, uh, doctors and nurses and health care providers. Um, helping our community out for free, and it just makes sense that the uh, municipality of Anchorage makes a contribution. And Project Access was getting twenty thousand dollars a year um, to help with their efforts, and it may be something that we can talk about in terms of a contribution to um, Arbor. I'm not saying how much, but um, on an annual basis through the grant process. So I'm just throwing that out there. So access was kind of a project access. Yeah, project access. There's a there's a grant pro process that's um, within the mayor's office, right. okay, and you have to apply for the grants. And so, and, and I don't think you folks ever did. Maybe you weren't even aware of it, but that's something to um, to look into. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Got that well, we did that through the first quarter miles. budget revision. That was kind of different. I mean, it was a grant, but that that's different than, than what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. So we need to do that. And, and thank you, Elby, for and Mr. Chairman, for the time that you have given us. Thank you for Standing relationship, I know of. Uh, could I comment, Go Mr. Ahead. Chairman? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You can may know you, more than I um, Can you clarify what you, the question that you just asked in terms of a standing relationship? What do you mean? Funding or um, ongoing contributions? It's just on an application basis. For okay. A grant. So he, here's how it works in this community. Okay. And there is um. Uh, I, I don't know. I, work. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know how grants work. So. I can help Sylvia apply for a grant if you'd like that too. Um, if you allow me to, to finish what I was saying, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyway, what I was saying, and in, in the municipality of Anchorage, there's a grant process, and, and I'm sure you do know how grants work, but I'm just talking about in the municipality of Anchorage, and there are a lot of grants given to a lot of agencies, and there's an application process. Have you ever seen that process, the municipality's application process? Well, excellent, excellent. Then you know how to how to apply for a grant through the municipality. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Another problem we're facing is lack of revenue. 
and right now we're looking at probably a potential loss of upwards of $10 million. And so I don't know how much money there's going to be, quite frankly. We're going to have to cut some projects and give money to others. And that's always a bloody little process. But given the fact that the state is cutting back revenue sharing, given the fact that we, the RCA says we can't get a contribution from municipal light and power, it's about $10 million that we're going to have to really be looking for money this year. So I'm not going to know until we get in the budget cycle what we're dealing with. So, Mr. Chairman, we have ahead, about Matt. 10 minutes left. So I would invite our visitors from um, Kentucky and, and Canada, if you have any comments that you'd like to make or any questions, I would invite you to do that. Well, sure. Um, I'm just glad to be here. And thank you for letting me be in Anchorage. I'm um, happy to see you. It's, uh, I was telling somebody. You're our closest neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, not Kentucky. <laughs> I was telling someone last night, I hate coming to Alaska because it's so far away. But I love it when I get <laughs> So thank you for letting me be here. Um, we, you know, talking to Ed, you get a feeling of the roots that Brown Jug has in the community. And, you know, the, um, and that carries a heavy responsibility, and we feel that. You know, so Janet is uh, 35 years Anchorage person, and uh, she is educating me every day what that means, what Alaska for Alaskans means. You think you know it up here, but I'll never know it here. And so I have to depend upon Janet to tell me this. And, and we want to take part. We want to be in the room and we want to participate. We want to make Anchorage, like we want to make in all of our communities, the best place we could possibly live in. Because if our communities prosper, we prosper. Um, you know, if the, if the children of Anchorage are safe and secure and successful, those are our children. And we want to participate in all of that. And uh, as, we, as we learn more, I keep saying we, as I learn more, the, I would like to think that, um, that we can participate in more places and help more. You know, it's, um, you, you say that you're in a situation where the funds are difficult. They're difficult in Kentucky. They're difficult everywhere. And we're all facing that. And we're all having to come to grips with it. And the places where I see it work the best is when community partners come together with the city officials and can, can make the neighborhoods uh, better. That's all. Just really just thank you for letting us be here. And thank you for letting us come here today. We appreciate you being here. And we do enjoy Brown Services' relationship with the city because we deal a lot with liquor licenses. And very rarely do we find a problem with brown jug. Some of the other ones out there, we find a lot of problems with. But you guys do a lot of your own policing. So we appreciate that. If you have a problem, give us a call. We're more than happy to talk to you guys about it. Outstanding. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I know it's, it's been a great opportunity. This is my first time in Anchorage. So, yeah. so what part of Canada are you from? So I'm from Calgary. Calgary. Uh, I'm familiar. It's kind of an extension, but it, uh, I, I'm just sad that I didn't bring Mm -hmm. Canada is an interesting country. It's between us and the rest of the lower 48. It's always fun. Yeah. I was there when you guys were de dealing with the Meech Lake Accords. Oh, okay, right. And I'm so glad we don't have your problem. Yeah. I don't know. How, I mean, here, if we have a problem, we have a civil war. Down there, they dealt with the Meech Lake Accords with Quebec. Very civilized. Yeah, optically, sure. <laughs> so, how's your French doing? <laughs> but it's it's been great to be here in Anchorage, and uh, yeah, as, as Roger and Janet have both said, uh, it's important uh, as a corporate steward uh, in all the jurisdictions that we're in to uh, be a part of the community and give back. And uh, we're thrilled that uh, Janet uh, Janet's got things under control and, and looking to move forward um, in the future. So we're we're really excited. Like I said, if you guys have a problem, give us a call. Great. But I appreciate what Arba does to try and keep this town clean. And you're right with one thing. We've done a good job with take back our parks, but we need to expand that model to the rest of Anchorage. We've got to get the neighbors involved in it, as LV did with take back our parks over in that part of town. We need the same thing done in that area around that 
infestation. And a lot of people go by and complain about it, but very few of them actually deal with cleaning the mess up as you guys have. So let us know how we can help you on that. And we'll talk to the new administration, because I've got, now that they've hired a homeless coordinator, I've got great hopes on where they're going to go with that. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Elby. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple of comments. <clears throat> First, I want to thank all of you for being here. And I want to tell you how much we really appreciate having Brown Jug in our community. And we appreciate what you do um, in terms of giving back to our community in that respect. And I, I can tell you this much about the new administration. I'm sure Amy could um, confirm what I'm saying. This you know, chronic and ebert and homeless is on the forefront of this mayor's agenda. He's done some things already to, to help with the situation. And so um, Mr. Train and I are going to have a conversation um, with the new administration in the hopes that um, Arbor can, you know, uh, apply for a grant every year um, with the anticipation of receiving it because I just think it really makes sense um, for what you're doing and you're contributing. And you should give back to the community where you have your businesses. Yeah. But I think it also makes sense that the municipality find a way to um, contribute toward this effort because it's not in one area of our town anymore. It's all over our town. And Mr. Train is right in terms of TBOP. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk more about possibly getting um, to tell the community councils, getting TBOP all around the uh, community because the bottom line is this issue is not just the assembly of the police or the mayor. It's a community-wide issue. And when you empower the community um, to participate in making a situation better, things do get better. So again, thank you for being here and we appreciate all that you do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, ma'am. That's okay. No, I'm proud that I yeah, represent folks all, in the woods have, too. We all have done it. I just don't want the program to go away. It's been a hard work to get it to where it is now. And if, if it goes away, it's going to really be sad. It's a sad day for me. Yeah. It'll be a sad day for our town. Yeah. Not just for you, Sylvie, but our entire town. Right, no, our entire town. As long as we have their commitment, it's not going away. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to you later.